Hello, in today's video I'm going to be talking about a solo workout session. It's specifically designed for intermediate club players and above, but that doesn't mean that lower levels or higher advanced levels can't do that, uh, can't do it either. It contains a number of elements that I'll be introducing you to, so if that's of interest, stay tuned. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about a workout session, not, I'm not going to be showing you individual routines. I am, but they're going to be weaved into a particular workout session. Now this workout session can last from between 20 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. Depends how much time you have available, depends how much uh, commitment you have, depends how fit you are, depends how expensive the courts are. Now, there are two key elements that I want to talk about. The first one is what I call a core exercise. A, the core exercise in this case will be the side to sides. If you haven't seen my side to side video, you should click here. And in the next few weeks, I'll be producing an advanced side to side video if you're more interested in that. But the core exercise is one that is going to be alternated between the other exercises. And that means that you do, more or less, you do that 50% of the time. And that's important because it means that you've got a solid workout. The second concept that we're going to introduce here is sets. And what that means in this case is that you'll have one core element and then you'll follow it with one exercise, a different exercise, which I'll explain in a moment. And those two exercises is one set. And then what you'll do is you'll go back to your core and then you'll do a different kind of exercise. Now, what's really important is that, and I've said it before, I'm going to say it now, and I'm definitely be saying it a hundred times in the future, is that you should not be practicing solo work because you don't have a partner, because your partner's late. You should be getting on court, hitting the ball on your own, because it's one of the best ways to improve. It is a fantastic exercise. But to do it, do it right. And that means taking as much seriousness about the exercise as you would any other kind of practice, or even a match. So before I've come on court, I've warmed up. I'm sweating. Wouldn't even come onto the court to start hitting the ball until I'm sweating. I'm not going to be talking about the warm up and the cool down in this particular video. That's for, a, that's for another video. But essentially what's going to happen is you've got an area, a top period of time, where you're getting your core temperature high, you're moving your body, your blood's flowing, your heart rate's increasing. And then you come on court and you do more specific squash exercises. But those are the two elements. So that's what you need to do. You need to warm up properly before you come on court. Now I'm conscious that I've had lots and lots of sound problems, and you've probably just heard some of those already. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing the exercises um, on camera, of course, but I'll be overdubbing all of those different um, explanations and what we're looking at. So, let's get started. Set one. As I mentioned, the core exercise is the one that we start with, and this is the side-to-side -side motion. You really need to get into a rhythm. If you want to, you can say to yourself, I'm going to do 30 to 50 of these. And here's the main exercise, the first one. This is what I call variable lengths. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to volley the ball and move down the court to the back corner whilst in staying in control of the volleys. You won't have perfect technique because you're trying to move around and you're not coming from the tee, but your objective is to control the ball. Hopefully by keeping it quite tight to the wall, hopefully by hitting the ball quite high on the front wall. If you can, move to the back of the court and touch the racket against the back wall and then move forwards. I would recommend starting with just one of these from the front to the back. But if you have got a lot of control or you've done this quite a lot before, then you can maybe do two or three sets. It's up to you, your choice. Hit the front wall again though. Try not to make a mistake. Set two, this is side to side core exercise again really looking to build my rhythm. This helps by keeping the ball warm as well and keeping yourself warm. As I said, you can say to yourself, if you make a mistake, back to the beginning. And it's just the same on the other side, the forehand. And it doesn't matter whether you decide you want to start with your forehand and move on to the backhand, it's not so important. Don't worry too much about your footwork. Don't worry too much about your body positioning. You're moving down the court. It's quite difficult to get yourself in a really you know, technically correct position. But keep your wrist firm, prepare early, concentrate on how high you need to hit that ball. As I said earlier, 
If you're really good at these, you can do three sets. Now, one set is from the front of the court to the back and then to the front again. If you make a mistake, go back to the beginning. That's your choice. Set three, side to sides. Now you're getting a little bit tired now. You've been working hard. If you want to, you can do it within the service box width. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to hit a ball off the front wall, side wall, front wall, side wall, and kill it. Now I can kill it by hitting it at various speeds. What you'll notice is that I prepare very early. I'm not really trying to hit the ball as hard as I can, I'm just trying to control it. I should try different heights as well, so let the ball come a little bit lower. The lower you make contact with the ball, the softer you'll have to hit it. Try not to touch the ball with your hand if you can help it. Touching the ball with your hand can take away the heat and you want to keep the heat in there. I would probably do about 20 of these. I mean, you can do more, but you don't want to get cold and you don't want the ball to get cold as well. Don't forget to vary the speeds. Set four. This is obviously the other side. So you're back to your core exercise. As I mentioned earlier, you could change the core. It could be figure of eights if you wanted it to. And then it's side wall, front wall, side wall. And I'm doing the same again. I'm looking to prepare very early. I'm looking to make it hard for my opponent to guess what I'm going to do. I need to adjust my position. I need to adjust the speed that I hit the ball, especially when it's lower. You'll notice that one was low, so I had to hit it softer. Always looks quite impressive from here, and I touched the ball, but I couldn't help it that time. Um, but my shots in this particular exercise, in fact, most of them today, my shots haven't been very good, but it's the exercise that counts doing it the way you really should be doing concentrating on what you're doing don't just hit it try to do something specific with it and in this case you're trying to prepare early and get used to different heights different speeds there's no point being able to hit the ball to the back if you can't kill the ball when you get an opportunity and this is what this exercise is doing practicing that again do about 20 or 30 of course if your forehand is much worse or better, then do more or less on each side. It's nice to do the same amount, but if you need to, do more on one side. Set five, backhand drives. Okay, so again, I'm doing my side to sides. I've been doing these at the front because it's much easier to, uh, to video, but normally I'll do them much closer to the back wall. What I'm trying to do with these drives is what you've done a thousand times. I'm trying to build a rhythm. I'm trying to get the ball to come off the back wall, and I'm trying to get practice in keeping it quite tight and getting a good length. You'll notice something on the wall. That's one of my tar on the floor, sorry. That's one of my targets. I'll be talking about that in another video soon. So I'm really looking to get a rhythm. I don't think I've got more than about six or seven in a row without making a mistake. And that's just not good enough. Here you'll notice I'm hitting the ball about the cut line height. And as long as it doesn't touch the side wall, that's about right for me on this court with this ball. You might be better and be able to hit it a little bit lower. Keep those shoulders turned, turn your shoulders. Almost facing the back wall when I hit that ball. Now don't worry about having perfect footwork. When you do this exercise, you can't have perfect footwork. What you can do though, is make sure you don't get too close and you don't get your shoulders sort of not turning. That's very important. Set six, forehand drives. Again, side to side. This is about concentration now. Initially, it was just about physical, but now it's concentration. Don't make a mistake. Up and down the wall we go. Now my forehand today, or the day that I recorded this, was much better than my backhand, which is quite unusual. I'm looking to get the rhythm. I'm looking to prepare early. If possible, keep it within the service box width See how many you can do with no mistake. I mean, I didn't manage more than 10 when I was doing this. My filming doesn't always show that because having to stop and start is quite difficult. Now, that's a better rhythm. I'm in a rhythm there. That's number four. Got the ball for number five. Early preparation. T firm grip. Making adjustments. Looking to really touch that target if I can. Now, watch this last one. Finish with an absolute nick in this case. Watch, nick, second bounce in the nick. Just a few more from the, the front again. Try not to get too close. Look, I'm about, my feet are about a service box away. I often find beginners get too close. 
and they don't use their full swing to keep away from the ball. Set seven, backhand corner drives. Again, I'm doing my core exercise. I can vary the number. In this case, I just did 10 just because they were that was the routine. But normally I'd do 50. Now here I'm looking to hit the ball near the front corner. Not too low because I'm not trying to kill it. I'm trying to make it come back to me. I'm trying to force myself to really prepare early. I'm also having the practice that if the ball gets low, I need to be able to control it. I shouldn't be able to just hit it anywhere. I should be able to control it. Early preparation. Now, I don't have that much time. I'm hitting about 70% my maximum. You need to get the timing right. I'm hopefully making it look quite easy. But if you get the timing wrong and you start to hit the ball too far away from the corner, you'll find that you lose the rhythm. And there's the perfect example. Set eight, side to side, forehand corner drives. If you want to, try hitting some hard and then some soft. Now, as I've mentioned, my forehand was working well the day that I recorded this. So I find this particular side a little bit easier. I've really got into a rhythm quite quickly. I didn't make too many mistakes. You have to adjust your footwork all of the time. Even if you could stand in one place, you should be trying to move. Don't worry about having perfect footwork. Just worry about making sure you prepare and you hit the ball where you want to. Don't forget to watch the ball hit the strings and keep that bracket prepared as early as possible. Over time, you'll get tired and your preparation will get weaker and weaker, but this is where you really need to keep it firm. Set nine, side to side, boast. Now this is by far the hardest exercise for me, partly because I'm, I'm an old man now, partly because I've got um, hardly any practice and bad hips and all sorts of things. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to boast the ball to the side and then turn and boast it again. Now initially, I make it come off the, both walls before bouncing, but what I really want to do is I want it to bounce before I get there. My technique has, has just gone at this point. I'm tired, I can't swing properly, I'm just struggling to keep this ball going. Now if I have to, I can hit it a bit higher and it'll come back to me. But bouncing on the floor, it won't come back to me. You'll probably do a much better job than I am and you can hit the ball much harder. I'm hitting it quite softly because there is no way I'd be able to move fast enough otherwise. So we're going to finish with a complete mega set. That's all of the individual sets seen from above. Now, in this particular case, I did 10 side to sides, um, but I've edited those out. Um, I'm also going to do them in a slightly different order because what I want you to know is that you can adjust the order. There's no particular um, set order that you have to do them in. Um, in this case, there isn't. Sometimes there might be because it sort of works on different aspects. But in this case, you can do them in any order. So I'm just going to the back of the court here. I'll make a mistake. I haven't practiced very much. I've only been on court um, with somebody twice in the last three years. So I'm not expecting to hit some great shots. And you can see those targets on the floor from a, in this angle a little bit better. So uh, keep an eye out for my video on that soon. M work my way to the front. Try and touch the wall without touching the ball and there we go and i just go keep doing that for as long as i feel comfortable again side to sides and then to the front again touch that wall work our way back now i'm not trying to go too quickly i mean you could rush back as quickly as possible but you need to remain in control but at the same time you don't want to take too long you don't want to be standing in one place for you know three or four shots you want to try and be moving all the way back. Now, watch, I try to hit the back wall with the racket. On the next shot, there it is, I hit it, and then I come forward. It's good for your um, court awareness, knowing where you are on the court. Now, I made a mistake, but I'll just keep going for as long as I can. I'd probably do three sets. I would do three sets, because I really need to work on this aspect of my game. Touch the front wall with the racket. Side to side. I've edited out the side to sides because that's just a waste of time here. And here we go. So I decided to do the drives now. So straight into these. I get quite a good rhythm going. Now that I've been doing this um, hitting for a little bit today, um, my rhythm was improved. Sort of got a little bit closer to the targets as well. There we go. Just I only did like five of those. And then side to side again. And then straight away, 
we're going to go up and down the wall. Now, what I'm really looking to do is I'm looking to build the rhythm as much as I can. I want that rhythm going. Nope, oh, and I ruined it. Nearly kept the ball going there. Now, of course, I'll probably be doing 30 side to sides and then probably 30 of these. You can vary the numbers of exercises you do. You don't have to do 30 of, of everything. I tried to hit the ball <laughs> and keep it going side to side there. There we go, some more side to sides. And here we go. Now here, I've gone into the corner drives. In my explanation, I talked about doing the kills first. So I just changed the routine, uh, the order of this. Not doing a very good job. Anyway, side to sides again. There we go. And forehand corners. Tried to get this going in one go, but it didn't work. Looking to build the rhythm. Looking to keep my wrist firm. Early preparation. Keep hitting that ball into the corner. Getting it to come back to me as much as possible. The closer you can hit it to the corner, the more likely you are to keep it coming back to you. Onto my side to sides. And now I go for the ghosting. So if you wanted to add something to this routine, you could add a set of ghosting between each one. So you could do a side to side, the actual exercise, and then a ghosting routine, or any combination of those. Now I go straight back into a side to side, because I want to make sure the ball's warm. And there we go. I'm into the kills now. Side wall, front wall, side wall. Very... The angle, vary the power, vary the speed, vary the spin. Try to keep them different. And side to side again. Now I only did five of those. Again, I'll probably do 20 of them. And now we're straight into the forehand kills. Try not to touch it, remember. Try to vary the speed. The lower the ball, the softer you have to hit it. You won't be able to hit a nick if it's very low. If it's below the kite of the tin, it's almost impossible to hit a nick. It is it to the front of the court. It's possible to the back. And I'm into my side to side again. And here we go. Here's the side to side boast. Now I'm tired at this point. Oh, I managed to hit a nick there. I was quite happy because it gave me a little bit of a rest. Don't expect that to happen. Remember, you want the ball to bounce before it hits the second side wall, if possible. Because that makes it harder for you. Now, I probably would only do 15 or 20 of these, because that's all I could manage. I really couldn't manage too many of these. Now, this could be your core exercise, if you wanted it to be, if you're fit enough. And then when I finish those, I'll finish with a side-to-side -side set. It's like an extra set. It's a bookend but it really helps you finish. And if you have to, say to yourself, 30 with no mistakes, or I have to keep going until I've done it with no mistakes. Take solo practice seriously. Plan. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, I made a video about maximizing the time that you're on court by using three particular tricks. Now, in this particular case, I didn't use that because this was more of a physical concentration workout, whereas the other kind of tricks, uh, tricks, sorry, they're not tricks, they're tips, the other tips are for maximizing the time when you're on court doing slightly other things, slightly different things, sorry. It's a tough workout. I mean, it's one of those things that just like anything, you can make it as hard or as easy as you want to. If you hit like the side to side incredibly hard and you do like 50 of those, you're going to get like a good workout. So don't think it's like an easy one. This is not so much a technical workout, this is a really tough physical workout. And I'm hoping that it, that will encourage you to spend more time on court on your own. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time working on your technique, but this one is about getting on court and hitting the ball and getting strong. So, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed watching my videos, please consider subscribing or liking or not. I mean, as long as you enjoy it, that's all that really matters. Um, I've got a Patreon if you're interested, which means you can support me and I'll be able to make more videos. I certainly need to upgrade my equipment. So, thanks for watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.